Welcome to a new video on the channel. Today we will explore six traditional sports in Africa. In this video, I will discuss the different sports, their unique stories, the rules of each, and provide details on their distinct cultures. If you enjoy this type of content, check out the other culture episodes we have on the channel. Also, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. This video will be divided into six chapters. In the first chapter, I will cover Dambe boxing, which is a traditional form of boxing practiced in West Africa by the Hausa culture. Next, we will travel to Kenya to watch the 700-year-old donkey race. This unique sport combines the thrill of racing with the charm of donkeys. After that, we will return to West Africa, this time for Senegalese wrestling. This popular sport is one of the most well-known exports of the continent, and you may have seen it on Netflix or in a documentary. Then we will travel to the beautiful island of Madagascar, where they practice the intense savika, a traditional martial art that involves livestock. Fifth, we go to Southern Africa to explore the complex game of Dibeki, a traditional team sport played with a leather ball. The rules may seem a bit crazy, but once you understand them, it's extremely entertaining to watch. Finally, we head to Central Africa, where women compete in the sport of Nzango. This Congolese jumping sport, generally played by young women, is becoming a key feature of their culture and is also very fun to watch. I've also saved a secret sport for North Africa for those who really love this video, simply because seven is my favorite number. Let's start our trip in Africa to discover the six African traditional sports you need to know about. Sport number one, Dambi Boxing. Dambe is a traditional form of boxing associated with the Hausa people of West Africa. Here are the basic rules of Dambe boxing. Dambe is a striking sport in which one fist is used to strike an opponent and the other is used as a shield. The sport consists of three rounds or fewer if a knockout punch is delivered, and believe me, there are many knockouts. Typically, the fighters in this sport are members of the Hausa Butcher cast groups. During a fight, each fighter is only allowed to use one hand to strike their opponent while the other hand is used for defense. To protect and enhance the striking hand's effectiveness, fighters wrap it with cloth or rope. Fights are typically held outdoors on a dirt surface with the boundaries of the fighting area sometimes marked by a rope or chain. The most important event in Dambe is typically considered to be the annual Dambe National Championship in Nigeria. Skilled fighters from different regions come together to compete for the title. The origins of Dambe are believed to date back several centuries, although the exact time of its creation is not well documented. There have been several famous Dambe boxers, including Ado Dan Quer, Dan Dunawa Gundumi, Ali Zuma, Babalin Bala One, and especially Shago, who is considered the most famous Dambe athlete. While Dambe is not one of the highest paid sports, victorious fighters can earn up to $400 per fight. However, most fighters earn as little as $20 per fight. Despite their fame, Dambi warriors remain significantly underpaid. The payments are under the supervision of the chiefs, and spectators also give gifts to their favorite or winning fighters. Dambi boxing is a brutal and intense sport that has gained popularity in recent years. Fans across the world can view videos of it posted on YouTube. Check it out for yourself. Sport number two, Kenya donkey racing. Our next sport has been around for over 700 years. The small island with the city of Lamu is among the oldest inhabited Swahili townships on the planet and is Kenya's oldest continuously inhabited settlement. It is full of traditions that date back thousands of years. One of these traditions is the Lamu Cultural Festival, which celebrated its 20th edition on November 26, 2022. In its heyday, the island served as one of Africa's most important international trading hubs with visitors from India, China, and Arabia. Donkeys have been cemented in Lamu's history since its early days and were increasingly important during the time of trade. The rules of the race are pretty evident, so I won't bore you with them. The race is part of the Lamu Cultural Festival held every November. This festival celebrates Lamu culture and history and includes Dao sailboat racing, which is also an important part of Lamu's history. The sport is popular with people of all ages. In 2016, the race was won by 14-year-old Omar Kombon and his noble steed Kagala, earning them a hefty cash prize and a two-day holiday in Nairobi. The donkey race meanders around the old town, 
providing riders with the challenge of navigating through different corners in varying environments. Donkeys are usually ridden bareback, although some riders use padding. The riders control their beast using reins and a stick, similar to a whip in horse racing. If you want to witness this cultural event, mark your calendars for November 2023 with the 21st edition of the Lamu Cultural Festival coming up. Sport number three, Lamb, Senegalese Wrestling. The origins of Senegalese wrestling, also known as Lamb, can be traced back to the 14th century in the Kingdom of Sini, a post-classical Sarah kingdom located along the north bank of the Saloum River Delta in modern-day Senegal. Lamb was initially practiced as a way to prepare young boys for war and to protect members of the community from wild animals. The sport has evolved over time, gaining popularity in the 90s with corporate sponsorship and large arena fights. Lamb became a viable profession around the time Senegal achieved independence from France in 1960, with wrestlers receiving about $200 per fight. In a Lamb match, the two opponents are allowed to use their hands and feet to attack each other. Punches to the face and body, throwing an opponent, and punches from the clinch and on the ground are all allowed. The fight is over when one wrestler falls, which occurs when their head, back, or buttocks touches the floor, when they are on hands and knees, or when they are thrown out of the ring. In the sport of Senegalese wrestling, the wrestler who forces their opponent to submit or contact the ground with any body part other than their feet wins the match. This traditional sport is performed by the Sera people and is now a national sport in Senegal and parts of the Gambia. Business promoters organize the sport and offer prizes for the winners. The largest wrestling stadium in Senegal is the 20,000 capacity Arena Nationale de Luc in Dakar. Senegalese wrestling has become so popular that TV stations have started casting popular athletes in series due to their massive popularity. Lamb is also part of a larger West African form of traditional wrestling. Some of the most famous wrestlers in Senegalese wrestling include Tyson, Mor Fadam, Manga 2, Balabe 1 and 2. These wrestlers have made their mark in the Senegalese wrestling scene and continue to inspire passions and cries of joy today. The most prestigious event in Senegalese wrestling is the Festival International de Lutte Traditionnelle in Dakar, which is hosted by the president of Senegal himself. Wrestlers from all over the world come to compete, and the event is nationally televised, adding to its prestige. Sport number four, Savika. Savika is a traditional sport from Madagascar that involves fighting with bare hands against a zebu, clinging to the bump or the horns of the animal. While the origins of Savika are not clear, it is believed to have been practiced for centuries. The goal of the sport is not to hurt or kill the animal, but to prove one's own strength. Let us know in the comments below if you think you could participate in this unique sport. In Malagasy rural society, the zebu holds a symbolic place and is present in all events, such as funerals, pamadihana, exhumation, and other traditional rituals. Savika is a rite of passage that a young man must undertake to be accepted as a responsible man in his community. The Savika technique is passed down from father to son. The zebu is also an essential companion during fieldwork, such as trampling rice and pulling plows. The father entrusts his son with the responsibility of guarding the herd, observing the behavior of each animal, and getting to know them. On the day of his Savika ceremony, the son must prove that he is now a man, capable of assuming his responsibilities within the family and community. Currently, Savika is becoming increasingly popular and is one of the main attractions during Easter and Pentecost celebrations. Although the sport is still practiced in rural areas of Madagascar, there are occasional Savika events held throughout the country. The spiritual overseers of Savika, witch doctors, provide limited information as to where these bull wrestling rituals will take place. I invite you to research more about this sport and watch YouTube videos to learn more about it. Sport number five, Dibeke. Dibeke, also known as Skalulo, is a ball game played with two teams of 12 players in South Africa. According to oral history, the name Dibeke was given to describe the addictive nature of the sport to the youth who played it week in and week out every day of the week. The game is played on a 60 meter long and 40 meter wide field. The main playing area is a strip, similar to a cricket pitch where the attackers score points. The defenders are scattered around this strip. 
the game is played with a size 3 leather ball for seniors and a smaller size 1 leather ball for juniors. The attackers kick the ball and defenders can use their hands to pass the ball to each other in an effort to tag the attackers. Once the ball is in play, the game becomes a challenge for the opposition to score as many points as possible up and down the strip. The attackers, called individual attackers, must kick the ball beyond the center lines towards the attacker's box. The game is similar to baseball and cricket in that a player is out if the defenders tag them with the ball. The game has a time limit of two halves of 40 minutes. If the attacking team is not dismissed, the remaining players can continue attacking for the rest of the match to be declared the winners. Each player should have their letters clearly printed on the front of their shirt. Winning, the team with the highest score at the end of the game wins. Attackers are out if they fail to kick the ball beyond the center line, get hit by a defender's ball, run out of bounds, or don't make it past the defender's area after three attempts. Fouls, penalties, players who incite disruptions or insults or display negative gender attitudes will receive a red card and be suspended. Obstructing another player, challenging the authority of a match official, or delaying a throw will result in a yellow card. Next time you're in South Africa, make sure to check out where you can see this amazing game. Sport number six, Nzango. Next, we will explore Nzango, also known as Kanje, which is a women's sport in the Democratic Republic of Congo. It originated from a simple game played by primary school children and was later transformed into a sport. After being approved by ministerial decree in 2005, official rules were created and matches have been organized. Nzango is played on a pitch measuring 8 meters by 16 meters, marked with a red central stripe and two blue stripes on the side. Two teams of 17 players, including 11 players and six reserves, compete for 50 minutes. Nzango is a sport that may seem complicated, but is actually quite simple. The objective is to imitate the movements of your opponent as accurately as possible. Teams select a foot to attack and take turns with the rhythm of clapping and singing, which sets the pace of the competition. The referee awards points to players who place their feet, just like their opponents. Yellow and red cards are given to those who break the rules. The winning team is the one that collects the most feet throughout the entire match. The Democratic Republic of the Congo adopted Nzango in 2001. It was demonstrated during the African Games in Brazzaville in 2015. Many people in Congo aspire to make Nzango an official sport alongside football, basketball, or volleyball. Currently, over 25 teams are registered at the headquarters of the Nzango Provincial League, located in the municipality of Gombe. The Kinshasa province is divided into two leagues, the Kinshasa East League and the Kinshasa West League. The Nzango Federation has been organizing championships since 2010, and there are tournaments and competitions held throughout Congo to promote the game. The biggest Nzango competition is the championship organized by the Nzango Federation. Bonus. Sport number seven, Tatib or Tatib. If you've made it this far in the video, it may be time to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our next culture video. As I mentioned earlier, seven is my favorite number, so I had to add this one. The practice of Tatib, a traditional stick fighting sport, is concentrated in Upper Egypt, particularly in the governorates of Minya, Asiout, and Aswan. However, the sport has also been adopted by other rural communities in the Delta region. For centuries, the stick has played a significant role in Egyptian social life, particularly in rural areas where it is a symbol of masculinity and is used by peasants in their daily lives. Tatib is an original martial art that uses a stick and has been known in Egypt since the 5th dynasty of King Sahure, 2600 BC. Tatib, along with archery and wrestling, was a mandatory part of soldiers' training. Tatib promotes values such as chivalry, strength, pride, and harmony, making it a source of entertainment, joy, and pleasure during various celebrations. Children as young as 10 learn from older individuals starting with rules and ethics and progressing to stick and self-defense techniques and advanced Tatib skills. Respect for the Tatib tradition is emphasized alongside courage, strength, agility, and cunning. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
In case you found it interesting, I have marked a website below that I think you might find fascinating. The website shares a wealth of knowledge about traditional African sports. It is worth checking out. I am passionate about African culture and intend to create more content about it in the future. Stay tuned for that. I will cover various aspects of African culture, including traditional music, food, and fashion. There is so much to explore and discover, and I am excited to share it with you all. Finally, if you like this video, please don't forget to like and share it with your friends. It helps me reach more people who are interested in learning about African culture. Thank you for your support, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.